board. Let's see. All right, here we go. All right, so good morning and welcome to Spring Clean Your Digital Life. My name is Erin Warren, and I'm an instructional coach for technology for the Ohio Valley ESC and a partner of the Remote edX grant team. So we are a team of area ESCs who have partnered together to provide free instructional coaching technology to area teachers. So I'm excited to be here today with you, and I have provided a QR code and a tiny URL that you can get access to my slides. If you'd like to come back to these later, um, feel free to do that as well. Um, and I have my email and our Calendly links if you would like to schedule a time with us and I will explain that further. So again, I'm excited that you chose to spend some time with me this morning. So let's get some housekeeping things out of the way. First of all, if you're joining live with us today, please mute your microphone. Um, also, if you are joining us live in the chat, if you could type your first and last name and where you are from, that kind of helps us for attendance purposes. Speaking of attendance, we do have a Google form. I have a QR code. Um, if you access my slides, you can get it out of the um, slides as well. And then I'm also going to uh, paste the link to the attendance form in the chat as well. So again, make sure that you fill that out so then you can obtain your CEU credit. Um, the Remote edX grant team has a Google Classroom in which all of our recorded sessions are located. If you have not joined already, the join code is Z-B-I-P-R-I-J. Um, you probably wanna use a personal Gmail account for that because sometimes our school accounts don't really work well in Google Classroom. We also have a YouTube channel that all of our videos are located. This past winter, the Remote edX grant team did a winter webinar. And so all of our uh, videos are located on our Google Classroom page and on the YouTube channel. And all of our sessions that we're doing this spring are also being uploaded to this channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at erin.warn at ovesc.org with any questions and again, to get your CEU certificate. Please visit ecoe.se slash tech coach to learn more about the Remote edX product project and how you can obtain free instructional technology coaching um, from any one of our coaches. Okay, so with housekeeping out of the way, Let's see, let's look at this here real quick. Very good. With the housekeeping out of the way, again, I just wanna introduce myself. My name is Erin Warren. I am part of the Ohio Valley ESC, has an instructional coach for technology and a, re a member of the Remote edX grant team. You can email me at erin.warren at ovesc.org. And you can also schedule an appointment on our Calendly links as well. I have 18 years of classroom teaching experience, but this is my first year at the ESC. And in the classroom, I had various grades and various subjects as well. Okay, so for our agenda today, it's as follows. First of all, we're gonna talk about how tidying up and why tidying up is important of your digital spaces. Next, we're gonna kind of dive into Google Classroom for some tips and tricks to tidy up your classroom before summer break. And then we're gonna talk about some general digital tools, um, some best practices for tidying up some of your other digital spaces that you might have as well. And again, there's that QR code for the attendance form, so then you could obtain your CEU certificate. Okay, so before we get started today, I kind of like to have a temperature check of where we're all at here. So in the chat, if you could please, on a scale of one to three, tell me how much do you like to tidy up? So are you a number one where mess is best and you don't really care? Are you a number two that you like to have some order? Are you a number three, you're tidying up for, you're all for tidying up, whether it be physically or digitally spaces? So let's see, we got some twos, we got some three. Oh, good. I am so happy we got some fellow threes because I like to have a neat spot, whether it be my physical areas or my um, digital areas. Again, I like to have nice, neat, tidy spots. 
So again, and I'm going to show you some of my um, spaces, just kind of give you an idea in case you need some help with that as well. So thank you so much for participating in that, and we can go ahead and get started. So let's see. It's important to clean up our digital space so then that we are ready to go, we're able to find things quickly, and more importantly, we're not having a digital mess when we start school next fall. So by this time of the school year, your digital space may be very messy. So by taking a few minutes today and in the following days, you can tidy up your space to finish out the school year and have a clean start to the next school year without a lot of fuss and feeling overwhelmed. So what can we do? Well, as teachers, we can be good digital citizens. We can do this by modeling and promoting the management of personal data and digital identity. We want to be good role models to our students so then they can see what a nice, clean space looks like and kind of model from us. We can also design digital environments by exploring and applying instructional design principles. And finally, we can facilitate quality learning by managing the use of technology and digital platforms. So again, we want our students to be 21st century learners and we wanna make sure that we're modeling proper behavior to our students. So when the teacher's digital space is organized and decluttered, the students will benefit in their learning. So if we're not having to search and hunt for things online or where we're at, then it's easier for the students to learn. Okay, so when we're thinking about um, tidying up, and again, this can be physically or in digitally, there are six core principles that we can think about. The first one is to envision your ideal digital or physical space. What does this look like to you? How can you use your digital space most effectively? So again, just think to yourself, what would be the most perfect space and how can I achieve that? Now, once we answer this, these questions honestly, then we can move on to principle number two, which is to commit to tidying up completely. We don't wanna leave any digital space messy. Commit the time to tidy up all sections of your digital space. So again, this might be pretty overwhelming at first, especially if you see that you have a lot of untitled files and things in Google Drive. Um, these might be things that you want to really think about and maybe just set a timer. So like set a timer for 10 or 15 minutes. And then when the timer goes off, then take a little break and you can either come back later or maybe come back another day. Another thing that you can do is let go, discard, and then organize. Now, number three is always the hardest one for me because I'm always like, oh my goodness, I can use that at some point. I don't want to get rid of it, but really we need to get rid of outdated things, things that are duplicates or things that are no longer needed for our classroom space. So when we focus on organizing what's left into something that we can continue to keep tidy, it's easier to do. Now, this past spring, I mentioned that I had 18 years of classroom teaching experience. So I kind of had to go through this let go, discard and organize process. And it is a process because again, 18 years, you've got a lot of stuff. But again, you just take your time, see things that you can use, things that you don't need, and then organize them accordingly. And a lot of the things I was able that was on paper, I was able to put it on my computer and I feel better about having that as well. So next, the next principle is to tidy by category. So again, um, you want to tidy up your category, begin with the category and continue until you're satisfied with your results. Now, sometimes it's pretty easy to kind of jump from place to place, but if you just kind of stick to the where you need to be, it makes it go a lot easier. Follow a set order is number five. So again, you know yourself best, you know what you like and what you can use. So once you've established an order to your organization method, stick to it. So whatever you're doing in Google Drive, do the same thing for Gmail or for other platforms as well. Principle number six is only keep digital items that spark joy. Now, this is kind of a double-edged sword here because let's take, for example, rubrics. They might not be your most favorite thing ever, but if they help in grading your student work 
and it makes your classroom run smoothly, then that's something that you probably need to keep. So even though it might not spark personal joy, it might be something that you wanna hold on to because it helps your classroom run smoothly and effectively. So as we're going through these various platforms, as we're going through different um, things, just think about these six categories whenever you're starting your process and kind of follow these principles to kind of tidy up your spot. So let's get started. The first one that we're gonna be talking about is Google Classroom. Now, again, I'm just talking about Google Classroom. This is something that I used in the classroom as well. So it's something I'm familiar with. And so we're just gonna talk about this one today. So by this time of year, your Google Classroom can be pretty overwhelming. So if you just follow these steps, this, um, these few things that we're talking about here, it can help you spark the joy back into your Google Classroom and not make it seem like such an overwhelming mess. So again, before we begin anything, we always want to start with some reflection. Ask yourself these questions before you begin to tidy up. What worked well this year? What's something that worked well for you or worked well for your students? Um, what's, what was something that didn't work well this year? Was there too many clicks? Was there too many topics? Was there not enough topics? Um, what are some other things that you can note about your digital space that you would like to change? So again, if you just ask yourself these questions, reflect on these, then it's a lot easier to um, begin organizing your space. So once we ask ourselves these questions, then let's kind of dive into our courses. So the first thing we want to do when we're looking at our Google Classroom is we want to look at our drafts and we want to get rid of any drafts that you, we've never used this year. And kind of a rule of thumb, if you haven't used anything in the past 12 months, then it's probably time to get rid of it. So if you didn't use it, you're probably not going to use it. So again, look through those drafts. If you don't need them, get rid of them. Also looked at any unused or unorganized materials. You can either find a place to file them or get rid of them as well. Take a look at your topics. If you have any outdated topics, get rid of them that you that either they don't have any materials under them or you don't need them anymore. Maybe you're not doing remote learning anymore. Maybe you're not doing hybrid learning. Or maybe you need to make new topics. If you're looking at your materials and you're like, you know what, this could really fall under this topic, then again, you can go through and kind of create your topics. So again, just kind of looking through your courses of what you have, what you can clean up, what you can organize, makes it easier when you come back to school in the fall. Now, after you've got your courses the way that you want them, then you can ask yourself, do you want to archive or do you want to delete? And again, you do have some options when it comes to archiving your classroom. So when you archive a class, it's archived for all teachers and students who are members of your class. Remember, when you archive your class, you still have access to your materials and resources, and you can also keep the stream, the post, and comments in the archive class. And if you archive a class by mistake, you can always unarchive if you need to. So where do our archive classes go? Well, when you go, if you're in your Google Classroom, you can do the three line hamburger menu in the top left, scroll down to the bottom to the archive classes and it will list all the classes that you've archived. And again, if you put one in there by mistake, you can always just click on it to unarchive it. But remember the lead teacher is the only one that can archive a class, unarchive a class. So if you are a co-teacher, but there was something in there that you wanted, then you might need to have conversations with the lead teacher to try to get those things back. Okay, so a pro tip is to remember that you can reuse a post from an archive class. So if there was a, a lesson or something in there that you really wanted to use next year, you can always reuse those posts. So again, you would just go to the archive class, pick the post that you want, click on the three dots, click reuse your post, edit it, and then you can assign it to any new class or classes because Google Classroom has updated to that and you can go from there. Now, let's talk about deleting a class. When you delete a class, it is permanent. So that's something that you really need to think about. 
So what happens when you delete a class? Well, you can only delete a class after it's been archived. The class is deleted for all the teachers and all the students. When you delete a class, it deletes all the posts, all the streams, all the comments, everything is gone. But remember, it can't be undone. So once you delete it, it's, pers it's permanent. Um, you can still access your assignments in your Google Drive folder, but you're not going to be able to access the stuff from Google Classroom itself. So again, once you have archived or deleted your class, another thing that you can think about is to go into your Google Calendar and to make sure that you have removed your class. So speaking of your Google Calendar for Classroom, there are three things that you can do for that. The first thing is do nothing and that basically your calendar is still on your regular Google Calendar and you don't have to worry about it. However, this can can become kind of overwhelming, especially if you have a lot of Google Classrooms and a lot of things that kind of clutters up your calendar a little bit. So the other thing that you can do is you can uncheck the classroom calendar from this year. So again, if you're done with this year, you can go into your uh, Google Calendar, you can click on the three dots and you can click on hide from view. The third thing that you can do is basically you can delete the calendar. And when you delete it, once again, that is permanent. I'm gonna jump out of here, my slide deck real fast, and I'm going to go into my calendar to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So on the left-hand side here, you see we have your different calendars. This Google Tips and Tricks is my Google Classroom calendar. So if I click on the three dots, I can click on hide it from the list, and it's not going to delete it. It's just going to take it off of my list. Then like when we see down here at the bottom, we have other calendars. I can always click on those, and it brings it back up to my Google Calendar as well. So again, those are just something that you can think about um, with your Google Classroom calendar as you're going through and um, tidying up your Google Classroom. Okay, so let's say that you have the perfect class that you could create. Um, and you're like, I don't want to have to worry about missing something next year because this is my ideal Google Classroom. So if you are going to be teaching the same class either next semester or next year, you might want to think about copying your class. If you really loved the flow of your class and the way that it's organized and you don't really want to start all over, then the copy in your Google Classroom has a template might be a good idea. So there are things that can, I, that can copy and there's things that can't copy whenever you're copying a classroom. So things that are copy would be your title, your section, your description, a course subject, the topics, the classwork, and the grading system. All these things will copy over into your Google Classroom. Now, things that will not copy would be a teacher announcements, deleted classwork items, students and co-teachers, student um, post attachments that you do not have permission to copy, meaning when you send work back to the kids, it gives them ownership and you're no longer in ownership of them. And then your Google site files. So these things won't copy over, but the other things like your classwork and things like that, that will copy over. But just remember, it's going to be in draft form. So whenever you want to use it, you would just click on your post, edit it how you need to edit it, and then keep on going from there. So again, making a copy of your classroom so then you're ready when fall comes might be a, a really good idea. Okay, we're finally on to some tidying up some other general digital tools. So there are other areas that you can take the time to tidy up. So we're gonna be talking about our Google Drive, our Gmail, and our Google Calendar. So again, these are just some best practice tips for tidying up your other digital space areas. The first one we're going to talk about is Google Drive. And again, whenever we're starting any type of tidying up, we want to reflect and envision our ideal Google Drive. What does it look like? How are things organized? How many folders do you need? Are you using a color code system? How are you naming them? Are you going to use emojis or numbers or names? These are all things that you want to think about before you get started of just putting things all crazy in your Google Drive. Next, you want to commit to tidy up completely. So examine every aspect of your drive, your my drive, your shared drive, your shared with me drives. Think about those. Delete any duplicate files or folders that you have. You only need one. 
Um, so you don't need a whole bunch of the same thing. Archive any old materials and files and make sure to give everything a name. Now, again, this might be where it's important that you um, think about um, if you want to name things, if you want to use emojis, if you want to use um, uh, numbers. Actually, I lost my train of thought here. This might be a good spot where you want to set if you want to set a timer. Because if you're looking at your Google Drive and there's a whole bunch of untitled, then you're feeling probably pretty overwhelmed. So again, setting that timer for 10 or 15 minutes a day, once that's off, you can either walk away from it or you could take a little break and come back. But again, you just want to tidy up completely before you start doing something else. Let go and then organize. Again, there's that tricky one for me, the letting go part. I always want to keep a hold of stuff. But you know what? You really need to clear out your old or unused files first. If you have any Microsoft files, maybe now's a good time to auto convert those. So then it makes it easier whenever you need to access them next year. Create an organizational structure. So again, if you're going to color code your items, how are you going to name them? Um, where do you want them within your drive? And then tidy by category, stick to your folder hierarchy and things that you're gonna use a lot or are important to you, you probably want on the top. Um, use priority workspaces to keep relevant materials together or star and favorite your most used materials. So again, these are all things that you can think about whenever you're thinking about tidying up your Google Drive. So uh, once again, I'm gonna come out of my um, slide deck and I'm gonna show you my Google Drive. Now, my Google Drive, you can see I have a lot of file folders. I've color coded my folders. And then within my folders, I have folders. So I have folders within my folders. And again, these are all color coded. And then when I click on my folders, then I have my files. So when you think about um, creating folders or files. If you have five items of the same thing, you might want to think about creating a folder for those. And then again, you can put folders within folders within your drive. Now, some people might think that this is a little bit too much, and that's fine too. But again, I like things to be neat and tidy. So that's how I like my drive to be. All right, so let's keep on going here. The next thing that we're going to be talking about is our email. So for our Gmail, there are some tips that we can do for tidying up our Gmail. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and jump out of here and jump into my email. And then we're going to go to settings. So one of the things that you can do is that you can make your inbox have all of your unread emails first. So again, if I go to my settings and I go to inbox, when we see inbox type, I can go down here and then I can pick unread first. That just brings all of your emails that you haven't read to the top. So anytime that you've clicked on your email, those will be the first ones you see. As soon as you click on that, you want to go down here to save the changes. So then that way it will be enabled. Another thing that you can do would be if you find yourself this past school year and you were saying writing the same email over and over and over again and it was getting kind of monotonous you can make templates so in order to make templates again we want to go over here to advanced and on templates we want to make sure that these are enabled um, hopefully you're able to do that uh, within your um, system once you do that, then you can just start composing your email. You can um, type whatever it is that you need to type to make a template. And then you would go to your three dots, to templates, and then you would save it. So whatever your um, template is that you're trying to write about, as soon as you wrote, write it down, you can save it as a draft. Then let's say that you have a template, like I have this one here, you would just click on it, and then there's your your information ready to go. So again, you can send it, fill in who needs it, send it out, and you have your templates for students or parents or whoever it is. Another thing that you can do is you can label 
um, and filter your emails as well. So for example, when you're using Google Classroom, you're probably getting a lot of emails from Google Classroom. So something that you can do is you can add a label. So then any email coming in from either Classroom or whatever, you can kind of filter that out in your emails as well. So to make a new label, if I go over here to the mail, which by the way, my Gmail updated this morning, so I'm still trying to figure out like where everything is. It's kind of weird. If we go down here to the bottom underneath mail, it says create a new label. Now you can do this in the settings or you can go from the side. So again, if you're getting a lot of things from, G or from Google Classroom, you can create a label for that. So you would just type in Google Classroom and hit create. And then you can filter out. So see, for example, for my Google Classroom labels, what I have is any work that's coming in, like submitted work or work that's late, I made a label and I filtered that out. So then that comes in and it's labeled under Google Classroom and I knew where, know where that's from. Now to make a filter, you would just go to filters and blocked, create a new filter, you can say who it's from. So again, you could type in Google Classroom or if there's somebody that you're always getting emails from or a, a box tops or something like that, whoever you want to make a label for, you can do that. You can include like if it has specific words in it, like for the Google Classroom, like submitted work, you can type that in there and then you can create your filter. And then whenever your um, emails come in, then you're able to see what they are. Oh, and the last thing is your theme. So again, this isn't really something that you have to do, but if you do wanna set your theme, what you can do is you can just go to your settings, to themes, set theme, and then there's a different pictures that you can work on. Um, you can click on any of these, or you can upload your own picture that you have saved to your um, drive as well. So again, this isn't really something that you have to do, but if it, you just wanna kind of brighten up your space so then it doesn't look white all the time, then by all means, that's something that you would really wanna think about doing. So there's some tips and tricks that you can think about to kind of tidy up your email to make it look a little bit more less overwhelming whenever you click on it, whenever you click on it. So the final thing that we're gonna be talking about is our Google Calendar. So again, you might wanna make a color coding calendar commitment. So you might wanna have like meetings, one color, um, uh, webinars, another color. You might want personal things, a certain color, work things, another color. That way, just so whenever you see it, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on in your day. You can also hide or delete any old calendars. And we talked about that whenever we were looking at our Google Classroom calendar. Now, something that you can think about, and again, this is something that's uh, fairly new for um, the Google Calendar, is that you can create appointment schedules. So if you're thinking about maybe next year, maybe you wanna schedule uh, reading conferences or parent-teacher conferences, or maybe meetings with your admin or whatever, um, you can create appointment schedules. Now this does take the place of appointment slots in your calendar. So the first thing you wanna do is if you're wanting to do this, you can go to your settings. And when we're in general, we go all the way to the bottom where it says appointment schedules. And we just wanna make sure that this box is checked because again, this is taking the place of appointment slots that Google did have. So when we check that, then we're all good with that. When we go to create, we can come down here to appointment schedule. So what we wanna do is again, we just wanna add a title. So let's say that I wanna schedule some reading conferences next school year. And let's say that 30 minutes, yep, that sounds good. You can change the time however long that you need it to be. You can make it repeat weekly, or if you don't want it to repeat, maybe you just want it on a certain day, you can just make it a certain day. So let's see, um, let's go ahead and make it for Monday. And let's see, school starts at eight, but my lunch is at, we'll say it's at 11. And then coming back from lunch, ooh, it gives me an hour. How nice, wouldn't that be swell? Um, but let's go ahead and take it and then go to three because we're done at three. So again, you can just, you can customize this. If you only want certain times a day, you can do that. 
Your scheduling window, by default, it does 60 days in advance that people can schedule. And then it also you can decide how many hours between uh, before your appointment is that you're going to allow them to do that. So let's just say an hour. But again, that is totally your preference. So again, if you need any buffer time, like maybe you need 10 minutes between um, meetings, you can click on that. And then maximum bookings per day. If there are, if you only want to do four, you can make it in four. Again, it's whatever you want. Now this screen down here looks like that it, it's not going to work, but it really does. So when I say next, then you can look, if you need your photo, you can change that. Um, your location, you can do this through Google Meet. You can do an in-person meeting. You can do it through a phone call or you can make something up later, but let's say this is going to be in person and it's going to be in my room. So then I'm just going to type in Mrs. Lauren's room. Okay. And then if there's any description or anything that you want to attach to this, you can do that. Um, the booking form, when somebody is booking, they can put their first name, last name, their email address. If there's things that you want them to add, like their phone number, or if you want to customize things, you can do that as well. And then if you want any confirmation reminders, if you want to send out email reminders, you can choose that as well. And then again, this button looks like it's broke, but it's not. And when we do that, it brings up our appointment schedule. So when we click on our open booking page, this is the link that you would share with whomever to schedule a time. And you can see that they could just click on these times and fill in the information for you. So again, that's just something that you can think about maybe using next year um, to kind of, you know, make yourself more available. Also, you can use your Google Calendar has evidence for lesson plans. So again, whenever you are creating an event or whatever, um, you can add in descriptions or attachments. So whenever you do that, you can pick things, you can upload um, PowerPoint, you can upload documents, you can use this to show your admin things, or maybe for emergency substitute plans. So again, that can all be on your calendar, everything that you need for your class could be on your calendar, and you can just click on it and go from there. Okay, so there's your calendar, some ideas. And then Wrapping up here, let's just think of some other areas that we can um, spring to clean, some best practices. First of all, we want to reflect, you know, what does, what's good, what isn't good, what can be better. Then we want to organize using standard naming conventions. We want to create folders and create materials if we need to. We need to delete any old or outdated materials, classes, and rosters. And if there's anything that we can reuse, maybe we just need to refresh some materials. We can do that for the new school year. Look at your bookmark bar. Um, is there things that you're using all the time? Maybe you want to clean that up. Maybe you want to make folders in your bookmark bar. Then that would make it easier for next year as well. Some other places to think about to tidy up, if you use Screencastify or Loom, you might wanna go through and look at your videos. If there's any that need to be edited, now would be a good time to do that, or any that you need to delete, you can go ahead and get rid of those. Go through your flip grid, see if there's any of how you can organize those or get rid of some of those topics. Your Google Apps and Extensions, look at your extensions. If you don't use them, then don't leave them on your computer because sometimes those do kind of eat up some of your computer life. So kind of clean those out. Look at those. If you use Edpuzzle, maybe kind of go through and see if there's any videos that you want to add or delete or get rid of if they didn't really go over well with your students. If you have any wakelets, maybe you can organize those, um, kind of change things around, add new ones if you need to. And any Nearpod activities that you have, you can always kind of tidy up those spaces as well. So again, when we're thinking about reflecting, um, our timeline for reflecting, we can think about what went well this year. We always want to reflect. What could have been better? What could we have done that to make our digital space more tidy. If you use Google Classroom, again, delete any old drafts, tidy up your topics, create new topics, or decide if you want to archive or delete your class. Um, again, when you delete it, it's permanent, so just remember that. Your Google Drive, you want to organize your files and folders, delete any old files, things that are no longer needed anymore, maybe color code your folders, and use a system that works for you. 
Other tools could be delete old materials and files. And again, just finding that system that you can relate to and work for, that would be great. Finally, after you get all through your tidying up, you can relax, enjoy your summer, knowing that you have a tidy digital space to return to when school starts again. So again, that's kind of like the, the best part is you can just be relaxed. When you return to school in the fall, you won't be overwhelmed thinking like, why didn't I do this sooner? Because you've taken the time to do that now. So, oh my goodness, we have talked a lot today. We've covered a lot of topics. I hope you are able to find something to help you to tidy up your digital space. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Um, again, my email is aaron.warren at obesc.org. You can always click on our Calendly links, either myself or there are other remote edX partners. And again, there's that attendance form to make sure that you obtain your CEU credit. So again, I am so thankful that you took some time out to meet with me today. And does anybody have any questions?